I'm Michael Fox, and this is the Prospector Podcast. And today I have joining me not one, but two special guests. I have the president and CEO of Stillwater Critical Minerals, Mike Rowley. And I have his VP of Exploration, Dr. Danny Grobler. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, Michael, before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's discussion, let's give everybody the uh, quick 10,000-foot view of the company and what you're doing and uh, where you're doing it. Oh, you bet. Be glad to. Uh, as America looks for critical mineral supplies, uh, what we're doing is more significant than ever. We share the iconic Stillwater complex with Sabanye Stillwater, and they're producing mines their uh, their minds literally span the Stillwater complex, and that speaks to the com- the continuity of what we're on to. And, of course, they're producing palladium platinum from the highest-grade deposits in the world, lesser amounts of nickel and, and copper and other things. We're basically proposing to expand that. We've got 1.6 billion pounds nickel, copper, cobalt, 3.8 million ounces PGMs and gold. And we're in the lower part of that system still on surface and our mineralization actually starts at surface, but stratigraphically it's lower. And Dr. Grobler here can, can speak to that better than I can. We're currently drilling. We're just off an $8.78 million raise that included Glencore's third check to us, which is very significant. And we're now drilling on two rigs that are over seven kilometers apart on this big, beautiful system here. Yeah, that's the uh, the uniqueness of this uh, particular conversation. It's not very often where I I catch the people that we're going to be talking to. We actually catch them on site. Uh, You guys are uh, working right now and talking to me from inside a uh, very active core shack and uh, as I was joking to you off uh, off mic before we started, hopefully the uh, the noisy equipment doesn't start up in the middle of all of this. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's good. Uh, you got lots of activity um, happening on site. You mentioned the two drill rigs, um, Dr. Gro- Grobler. Let's uh, let's talk about what you're hoping to discover through this uh, exploration season. Yes, thank you, Michael. Um, so this year we focused on on our targets that we planned from last year's uh, magnetotelluric uh, survey that we did. So we did a large area of the project uh, with expert geophysics. Uh, we received some really good information from them, uh, large uh, target zones, which uh, showed some, some significant conductivity on the electromagnetics. So that's our main target um, uh, positions for this year, and we planned our borals um, accordingly. Um, so we've the first two holes uh, we've basically completed now. Uh, these were two deep holes. Um, we we targeted um, some deep seated anomalies, which uh, was quite interesting for us um, based on the geology we've got so far. Uh, everything seemed to fit in well with our current uh, geological interpretation and the models. We have the 3D geological models and structural models. So um, everything we've seen so far in the core is really positive. Um, as Michael says, we, we do not have assays back yet. Um, like you guys say, the, the labs are quite um, uh, busy this year. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on uh, across Northern America. So we expect to see assay results hopefully at least by the end of september um we've intersected some some really good looking rock uh, and that's basically where, where we are right now and the model is holding up nicely and the significance there is that the model the the complex has never been modeled to this level of detail or really any level of detail i think Right. Yeah, the lower part of still water, you, yeah, you've brought great. this expertise from some of the biggest mines in the world, Ivanhoe's Platte Reef, yeah. also Anglo Americans Mahalakwana, to similar rocks here in Montana. Yeah, so I think the important thing is that we are targeting towards the western part of the still water complex the the floor contact um, where the magma, the the still water magma intrusion, the layered complex came into contact with with its floor rocks. Um, we do see, and we know from historic results, that there are uh, significant mineralization associated with that zone. Um, so we've, the holes we've drilled is actually extended into the foot wall. We know from other deposits across the world that are similar, uh, that the sulfide liquids can go down, uh, extend uh, downwards into, into the floor rock. 
and that's basically what we've seen so far. Um, so there's um, there's significant opportunity. Uh, it's it's not really been done before on Stillwater Complex. Um, so that's um, that's quite important for us to look at this this system that way. You've got two drills turning right now, and I believe you said they were seven and a half kilometers apart from each other. Are they drilling two separate targets, or are they drilling opposite ends of the same target? Yes, so we've got the Crown Mountain um, resource that have been defined previously, and the Iron Mountain resource. So those are the two main areas we focused on. We've seen historically that there are some good grades coming out from those areas. So that was our main target for this year. There's obviously mineralization extending between those, those two areas. Uh, like our CZ, the camp zone uh, deposit, uh, Crescent Creek uh, to the east of Iron Mountain, and then also cent Central, which is to the west of uh, Iron Mountain. We're seeing significant um, uh, magnetotelluric anomaly, a conductive anomaly to the east of Crown Mountain also towards the CZ deposit. So we've planned several holes in that in that zone for this year, and that's where the the Crow Mountain drill rig is currently active on. So it's gone on to its second hole there. Uh, like I said, the first hole was a fairly deep hole; it went down to 700 meters. Um, there's a reason for that <laughs> uh, why we did that, and and the same happened on on Iron Mountain. So that hole also went over 700 meters. Um, so that um, those were the two main initial targets we looked at. Uh, the subsequent holes will follow up on that. Um, these holes are basically within 100 meters apart from each other. So all of that will go into our uh, new resource update that, that, should, that should come after the season. Now, you said there was a reason for these uh, two separate uh, deeper holes on each of these targets. Uh, what was that reason? So that's correct. Um, what we've seen from the magnetotelluric survey is that there are, there are conductive anomalies that are extending at depth. Um, and that's quite intriguing for these kinds of systems. Um, so we're looking at that. There's two scenarios with, with um, mafic, ultramafic intrusions that you can have sulfide liquid uh, collecting near a saturation event in the magma, and that sulfide liquid can either extend downwards and collapse into its own floor rock because the intrusion, uh, the heat transfer from the intrusion is quite high. Uh, you know, these intrusions come in at about 1200 degrees Celsius. So they melt the floor rock basically below it. And your, your sulfide liquid will exploit that um, and go down within that floor system. So it will it will find weaknesses in in the country rock um, and and ex, exploit that and go down into those systems. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, the other option is that these could be feeder dikes, conduits like Voices Bay. Um, no feeder dikes really been proven in layered complexes globally, um, and there, there's plenty of reasons uh, the academics come up for that. Uh, but obviously these systems need some feeder dike to come in uh, for the intrusion um, to come into the, the, the country rock. So um, we're looking at all, all these options um, for what's going on here. Um, it can be quite complicated geology, but um, we've, we've got the expertise in the team to look at this. Um, like Michael said, we we brought, brought uh, Professor Wolfgang Meyer in his uh, advisor on, on our board. Uh, Wolfgang is one of the, the leading uh, academics in the world on mafic ultramafic intrusions. He's done work across across many countries. Um, yeah, so that's um, that's that's where we are. He's a key member of the Ultra Mafia. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> As are you. So um, when we're talking about these two targets, is the theory that these two targets are connected and this is going to be one really big mine or is this going to be two mines spread over the two targets? Well, this is going to be a little bit forward looking, but um, it, what we have is five deposits across 10 kilometers so far. Um, and uh, they want to connect, as shown, and it's worth noting that our neighbor's deposit, the JM Reef deposit now being mined by Sabanye, is contiguous across the entire Stillwater complex. We cover the lower portion, 33 kilometers long in strike. Um, 
Ivanhoe's Platte Reef mine, correct my numbers if I'm wrong, 8 billion pounds uh, nickel and copper, 95 million ounces of PGEs. That's across only four kilometers. And that's in the direct parallel setting that we're in relative to that mighty Marinsky Reef of the Bushveld, South Africa, to Stillwater here, which looks very similar. Um, that's the kind of scale we're into here. So those five deposits across the 10 kilometers really do look like they want to connect. The 1.6 billion pounds, 3.8 million ounces really could grow by multiples here. And we have the government's attention on that. Um, I think Sabanis and certainly Glencore's as well. Well, I think the strike extent actually gives you optionality of different access points into the mm. into the mineralized zone. So that's quite important also. Um, you know, it, it, that kind of option, optionality you don't often get in, in, in all bodies. So um, we see mineralization across strike, along strike. Um, so down that of it, remember this, this entire layered complex is dipping to the north. So everything comes, uh, all these different layers come up to surface or near surface. So again, that gives you quite a shallow entry point uh, optionality also. So we, we're looking at all, all these um, uh, characteristics for this, this uh, style of mineralization currently. So when the drill stopped turning at the end of the season, how many holes will you have uh, drilled and uh, how many uh, meters have you, will have you uh, have core for? Well, we go. We look at it as as we go because we keep on finding stuff that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, really interesting. So um, this Chrome Mountain hole has been a problem because we kept hitting more mineralization. That's how it wound up going past seven hundred meters. Yeah. So um, and they are slower, as you know, Michael. Uh, the deeper you go, the progress slows. Um, yeah, we're targeting at least a dozen holes here. We've we've got way more targets than we have funding. In fact, we have even permitted uh, more than we have funding for. So this wants to grow and we're going to grow it. Outstanding. Um, coming up over the next couple of months, if investors wanted to visit you and uh, discover more, I believe there's a couple of opportunities for them. Uh, the first one coming up here, September the uh, 10th to 12th in Beaver Creek, Colorado. Is that correct, Michael? Absolutely. Yeah, we will be very present at Beaver Creek. Um we're off to better in our backyard October 2nd, I believe. And then we're doing Precious Metals Summit Zurich in November as well. And I'm sure other shows as well. Watch our news releases. We'll start listing again the uh, the shows that are coming up. In the interim, if uh, listeners are going to be in the Beaver Creek area during the Precious Metals Summit, uh, uh, best to uh, schedule meetings with uh, Michael as uh, quick as possible. They are filling up fast. So Absolutely. Yep. Michael, Dr. Grobler, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys today. I know you guys need to head into a helicopter and go uh, fly over some of the sites. So uh, time was of the essence, and I appreciate the update, and I can't wait to see these uh, these safe cores when they, they finally get out of the labs this fall. Thanks so much, Michael. It means a lot to be drilling PGE resources in the U.S. beside an active PGE mine, i got to say. It's uh, it's an opportunity and uh, one I think you guys are pretty much the only ones that have right now. So, Correct. good luck. Yeah. Thank you. Still Water Critical Minerals is a paid sponsor of the Prospector News. The host owns shares in Warren's and Warren's Stillwater Still Water Critical Minerals uh, bought at the market for investment purposes. The Prospector News podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.